two more. <laughs> Three more. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, we're going to be talking today about the successful management of content management. And we'll touch on a number of topics. Um, it's not a very technical presentation, but we can uh, certainly answer technical questions. Uh, please feel free to interrupt anytime if you have any questions, uh, topics, ideas, statements, if you hate it. Um, and let's go forward. So a little bit just about myself. Uh, I'm Robert Jacoby, the uh, president of Arc Technology Group. We are, uh, just as of a couple weeks ago, a 15-year-old uh, web content management development firm based out of uh, Chicago. Yeah, we made it five, six recessions later. Um, and we've been doing Joomla since uh, Mambo. So we've, we've been in this space for a very long time. A little bit about the company. So we believe that open solutions drive business success, that the more our clients uh, can utilize open solutions, open source of code, that the better they can uh, create their uh, solutions with our help and maintain those either with us or um, by themselves. We have Fortune 50 customers to entrepreneurs. So we work with companies like Microsoft, Sears, uh, down to very small mom and pop shops that have small e-commerce enterprises selling anything from you know dog products uh, on up. We are Joomla focused. Uh, as I mentioned, we've been using Joomla since the day it was born and uh, Mambo beforehand. Uh, expert developers, we focus on very complex projects, uh, generally today in the mid to enterprise space, and our Twitter uh, URL. So let's get to the meat of the matter, the agenda. So uh, we'll be talking about you know the successful management of content management, and uh, we'll talk about how to uh, what we see as streamlining workflow, um, how uh, you can improve marketing using uh, Joomla, as well as you know the final goal being to grow sales, uh, and that would be growing sales for either yourself or for your customers. Streamlining workflow. Uh, we're going to talk about planning for content management. It's not just about throwing up a Joomla site or any other CMS. Uh, the implementation of that, and that will be more Joomla specific, uh, as well as uh, deployment of the content. So let's jump into the planning for content management. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we look at many basic marketing things when we're talking about planning for content management. You're going to want to know who you're speaking to, who's your planned target audience, what are they expecting. We're going to talk about uh, you know frequency of communication. Are, are these people looking at your site, you know, hourly, daily, monthly, weekly? Uh, what what kind of uh, you know as part of your target audience? You know, what are their expectations for receiving content? Obviously, if you're a new site, it needs to be immediate, or are you releasing updates and uh, talking through other communication methods? You know, what's the call to action? You just don't want people to sit there and read for uh, no good reason. Are you expecting them to uh, do something with uh, the information that they're getting from your website? And then uh, defining success. So what does it mean to actually have had rolled out your content? And you know, what are they doing with it? And how do you know that they've done it well? Yes, target audiences. What are they interested in? So these are the questions we always ask. Is you know, is this a this is a retail site? So are they just interested in uh, buying a product immediately, to, or do they need to do research to buy that product? Um, what are their you know demographics? You know, ask these questions internally before you start generating content. Before you start generating the actual uh, design and site and product. Um, why are they coming to your website? So that kind of comes into what are they interested in? Are they uh, just looking to Educate themselves. Are they looking to purchase? Are they looking to actually use your website as some kind of software as a service? You know, again, ask, ask, ask these questions throughout the process. Are demographics important at all? Does it matter? You know, what age group? What gender? Uh, you know, what space are these uh, potential customers and viewers uh, participating in? And when are they coming to your website? Are they coming based on an event from somewhere else? Are they coming in the morning? Are they, you know, is there a specific time period? Is it uh, seasonal? All these questions will help you define when you should plan to roll out your content 
and how you're rolling that content out, which ties right into the frequency of communication. <clears throat> and touched on this earlier, you know, is it going to be hourly? Is it going to be daily? Is it going to be monthly, weekly? Um, are you utilizing, you know, social media to drive that kind of content? Sarah, Sarah likes the picture. <laughs> Um, you know, Twitter is one of those instantaneous ways to uh, uh, grab content and uh, send it out to people. But there's one that gets a lot of technical difficulties. Yes, can you hear me? So, for example, uh, you'll find lots of uh, information on the web about when's the best time to do uh, certain types of posts and things. Uh, you know, for Facebook, Thursdays and Fridays seem to be the most uh, effective days to actually get your message across. Um, Twitter, you know, during commutes in the morning or evening, people are on their mobile phones, they can uh, take a quick look at what's going on. Or at lunch, again, when people have just a little bit of time and they want to see lots of information, they can scroll through it, whether at their desktop or on their mobile. Uh, email is usually best in the afternoons, we found, uh, at least in the States. So it's usually in two to five in the, on weekdays, um, Monday through Thursday. Tuesday through Thursday, really the best. Monday, everyone's busy with the real work. Friday, everyone's going to sleep. So during those days, we find it's the best. Um, blogging, we find that if we uh, actually create the blog on a Monday and let search engines kind of suck that up for a day, and then start the whole process of sending out emails regarding newsletters regarding that content, you know, Monday through Wednesday, uh, Monday through, or Wednesday, Tuesday. That jet lag really screws up the whole week. I don't even know what day it is today. Tuesday through Thursday, we'll send out a newsletter to try and drive track to that content. And then following the, you know, Twitter uh, commute and lunch hours, uh, follow up with that, as well as Facebook on uh, Friday or the weekends. Um, there's a, a great app that we use to sort of manage all that because it can get quite messy once you've just set up your content. So we use Buffer app. If anyone has, knows what that is or has used that, so it's B-U-F-F-E-R app, app com, And that allows you to schedule across multiple uh, social media very easily, very quickly when you want to deploy your content to other people. So that helps plan. So once you have a, a schedule for in a, for a week on how you want to roll out that content, you can easily set that up right away and just have it roll out for the week without having to worry about it. You know, what's, what's the call to action going to be? You know, this is all going to be pretty straightforward things that we've all seen. But some of them might be slightly different. You know, a lot of times, obviously, it's an e-commerce store. You want to drive someone to a product, to a web page. You want them to buy. Maybe you just want them to just click through so you have advertising on your site, so they're reading whatever pages and they're clicked through to your site. Um, a lot of times now we see that they, people need to post and share content as part of their success. So once you get content, they need to be you know, resent out, republished, redistributed. So that's also a, a type of call to action. And we drive that again through newsletters, through the actual content on the website, and through social media. So push, 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 multiple directions, um, and try to time that all out. Uh, defining success. Easiest one, especially in most e-commerce environments, is sales. So you have campaigns, you have uh, uh, newsletters, social media shares, things like that, and drives it to sales. Um, another one is social media shares. It's a pretty quick, easy way to see how well that content is being pushed along. You can see how many retweets there are, how many uh, replies in Facebook uh, messages, all that content. You know, you can see the engagement then uh, based on you know sales and social media shares and all that. And that ongoing relationship, ongoing communication actually helps build trust in the long run. So, you know, of course, the content has to be valuable. You can't just say, buy me, buy me, buy me. But as you keep that line of communication open, uh, through your readers, through your social media, through your website. It really builds a, a trust and relationship uh, with your clients and uh, readers. And now I'll take a breath. Any ostrich questions? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have those pop-ups, like you're reading a blog post, and then you have pop-up. Did you already subscribe to that? Um, I, don't, I find it really annoying. Um, would you... Absolutely not. 
and, and and Chris gave a great example of you know in your on your mobile phone or your iPad and you're trying to, it pops up and you can't even get back to the content because it's just one of those awful ones that blocks everything and the X is so small that you, you wind up hitting the advertisement and then you just never go back to that site or in line so you can you can always break it up your content and you know put it in line. Yes, absolutely. But are people going to all the web pages all the time? So what we see a lot of time, even on the best of sites, it's, there's a lot of uh, bounce rates. So you're you know going one two pages in, and people are done anyway because they've read what they need to, and they'll come back another day for something else. So if you're direct linking from social media or somewhere else. Uh, you kind of want to have that there and make that available. People aren't going to, it, it, the, the mind and eye will just blank out on it if they don't need it. I mean, they've seen forms, they understand forms. So as long as it's not something that's popping up in the middle of the screen or at the top and ruining the experience, you still get the experience from start to finish. Oh, and by the way, there's something else at the bottom. You certainly don't have to fill it out. You can move on. As long as the user's not feeling imposed upon by the content, uh, they'll react just normally to it. Is that it? Um, I will get to some of the fun, geeky stuff. Implementation. <laughs> Why Joomla? Well, you know, what makes it any more special than anything else that's out there? Uh, we'll talk about uh, some of the workflow tools we use, Atlassian, uh, the Atlassian suite, uh, and template development. And some extensions that we've uh, uh, utilized. Uh, as a company, we actually use very few third-party extensions. We develop most of them in-house, and they're very customized. But there are some uh, few that we really like, and we just they're always going to be utilized. Why Joomla? We're obviously all at JMB. We know at least a little bit about Joomla, at least how to say it or spell it. Um, I was talking with some people over the last couple of days about you know. What's WordPress? What's Drupal? What's Joomla? People seem to have the hardest time trying to figure out what Joomla is. People say, oh, I know what WordPress is. It's just a blogging tool. It's great. You know, just throw it up, you have a theme, and it's done. Or Drupal, that's the enterprise content management system. But really, Joomla can support all of that. And, 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 and to you know, steal uh, someone else's uh, line, it, it's, it's, it's powerful and simple. There's power and simplicity in Joomla. So you can, you can do everything. It's just sometimes hard to say this is exactly what it does because it can solve many, many different types of problems. You know, it's supported by one of the best open source communities uh, around. I, everyone from 36 nations just here to uh, learn about more Joomla. And again, it's easy to manage, deploy, uh, have content, upgrade, update. <coughs> One of our other uh, tools in our toolbox is the Elastian suite of tools. So this is much more developer-driven uh, set of tools, uh, but we find it's great for being able to uh, foster teamwork, to um, uh, manage uh, tasks, expectations, whether you're using waterfall or agile project management. Uh, Elastian has a whole bunch of uh, tools in it to handle the ticketing, to time management, to um, wikis, so you can really have all your details of the project in one simple space and share it across all your developers, whether uh, they're local or um, dispersed. You know, there's other tools we've looked at, uh, Teamwork PM, Basecamp. They don't seem to have the full set of uh, services that uh, we find that we need for uh, a high level of, especially on the task management side, when we uh, begin a project, uh, spec it out, create stories for it, and then create all the tasks underneath the stories. Uh, so Jira is the actual task management portion of Atlassian issue management as well. Uh, Bitbucket is Git that's just hosted at Jira. So it's just their own repos. What's really nice about these tools is they talk to each other all the time. So you're submitting task, uh, tasks and issues in Jira, which can be tied directly back to commits and releases. So you can see when that issue was solved, resolved, uh, as to what commit it was in and all that. So this is just a quick little slide of what uh, 
open issue screen would look like. Um, you can sort by all sorts of filters, whether when you viewed it, how long it's been uh, outstanding. Um, it's just an impl impressive amount of uh, functionality. You can work with it. One of the problems with uh, the Alaskan Suite is it's also really complicated when you first dive in there because there's so much, fe uh, so many features and functionality. You want to create an issue. Tons and tons of fields. You can always customize any of these things. So that's why there's a lot of uh, upfront work to get it uh, going into your internal workflow when you're developing out projects. Once you have it set up, though, it's easily templated and you can roll it out for every project. You know what kind of tasks you're going to have, what kind of uh, priorities you might have. You know, so in this case, we have you know issue types. You know, for us, we generally just have three issue types. It's either a new feature, a bug, or something crazy. So it's going to be fall into a pretty simple uh, set of rules, and we can assign to individuals. We can track where those individuals uh, are in the, uh, the process of resolving tasks, um, comment on them. And it's all maintained. It's also you can also expose parts of it to your clients if you need to, or if they want to see where tasks and stories are in the process of the project getting completed. And then Jira ties into uh, the tempo time management system that's in Atlassian. So you have to track hours. Uh, very easy to do. You can go back and see exactly which tasks took uh, how much time. Uh, very simple to pull out reports, do uh, billing from all of that. Uh, this is a little picture of Bitbucket. So it's a, actually, I think it looks a little friendlier than you know, Git out of GitHub. Uh, but these also tie into all sorts of uh, tasks. Uh, Confluence Pages, which is the Atlassian Wiki uh, set of tools, um, Tempo Time Management, and you can go through and watch where your commits are uh, relative to the actual tasks. Sorry, I just oh, go. Uh, there was something called uh, Bumble for continuous integration. I saw you use, uh, uh, it was Travis and Jenkins. Yeah. Uh, why not Bumble? Those are the ones that we're just using. <laughs> I don't. I don't make all the uh, technical decisions on how the uh, the uh, deployment process is anymore. So uh, our developers have decided they want to use certain sets of tools, and that's what they're using. Uh, but yes, it integrates with a whole bunch of other uh, tools for continuous integration. So it's very easy again, and you can manage that against you know tasks and time throughout the process. Uh, template development. We like to start empty. <laughs> empty, empty. A head, body tags, and see where we go with that. Uh, we believe in a mobile first template uh, development uh, philosophy, so we like to start from a, you know, the simplest possible and build out from there. Then we bolt on Bootstrap. Uh, just because, regardless of what Chris said about frameworks, Bootstrap really does make life easier for. Uh, Deploying uh, responsive websites. So we use three. We do not use the built-in Joomla uh, responsive or Bootstrap uh, libraries. Correct. So we yeah we we take those out yeah we take those out of the actual template and then uh, directly call uh, Bootstrap and uh, we'll run it uh, most of the time locally. So it's not having to fly out across the universe to also grab the files. And responsive, uh, responsive. Build responsively no matter what, even if you're not building out, uh, really looking at um, mobile, tablet, and desktop all at the same time. Start with the responsive framework. Uh, you, know, you can always you know, turn off the uh, media queries and things that are going to be driving that and just keep everything at 12 row you know, static. and uh, do it that way, but just start from that responsive uh, mindset and template, and then it makes it much easier to then scale up or down depending on which way you're going. Some of our must-have go-to extensions. The Yakima, it's just not—it's a—it's a no-brainer. It's—it's you know really the best way to have uh, that extra standby. Or your servers may be uh, backed up, or everything may be backed up, your code may be backed up, but having that nice uh, one-click uh, redeployment of, uh, of your site, no matter what size it is. I mean, we have some Akiba backups that you know take an hour to get done uh, based on the size. But you know, doing that just once a month for that full surefire, if all hell breaks loose, uh, we can just FTP it up and run it 
we're done and uh, we're good. Our favorite editor is Arc Editor. I didn't even know they were sponsoring until just two minutes ago. Um, <laughs> uh, we find it just so much, just so uh, customizable and fully functional uh, above and beyond uh, the inline editor that now comes with Joomla 3. Um, it, it just has a, a great deal of support and flexibility, and it just feels nice to use, especially for clients on the front end if they're doing front end editing. Um, that's that's really key. And again, one of the things by keeping your uh, site templates lean and mean is you always want to avoid some of these JavaScript conflicts, which of course occur when you start using uh, huge tools like uh, Arc. I know, uh, Nicholas should be here. Um, and then admin tools. It just makes managing a bunch of little administrivia that happens in uh, Joomla much easier. So uh, those are our, our, our three go-tos uh, for, for every site. Um, just a couple screenshots of what the Arc Editor looks like. Um, so really simple, really clean, really in line. You really get to see exactly what you're working on. So it's, it's much more WYSIWYG than uh, almost anything that's been out there ever. Deployment. Oh, I didn't change the font on this slide. Oh, but it's actually readable here. <laughs> so you want to know where you're going to deploy. So uh, you know. What type of environment are you going to be putting on cloud services? Are you self-hosting or a, a VM? So we'll talk about the environments and the files. Uh, we predominantly host on cloud services these days. So uh, in fact, most of our deployments are on Windows Azure cloud services. Uh, Azure makes it uh, pretty easy to just get up a Joomla instance immediately. There's a one-click, once you have an Azure account, a one-click Joomla button to get your whole site up and you just put in your credentials and it's ready to go. Um, that's actually running on IIS and talking to SQL uh, Server, or you can set up MySQL with it as well. Um, there's also Rackspace uh, cloud environments. Uh, we just like cloud because it allows us to scale much easier with a lot of our clients. So in the case of Azure, it's uh, you know one-click uh, traffic management, so you can set up multiple regions um, to have your site available for failover or uh, just uh, performance. Uh, files, Git, FTP, uh, another thing that we like about the Azure uh, cloud deployments is that it ties in, uh, back directly to our repository's master uh, branches. So whenever we uh, push to master, it automatically gets deployed out to the cloud. So again, really helps the continuous integration development process. We don't have to worry so much about you know, what's got to be FTP'd up or whatnot. More questions? Uh, yes. <laughs> you have for uh, code. Mm -hmm. um, what about the database itself? How do you uh, keep those uh, in sync? Uh, do you create uh, SQL backups and uh, those in the repository? Actually, that's exactly what we do. So we'll 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 uh, have the backups, and we'll also have uh, SQL scripts that we're running against those. So whenever we do any kind of you know sort of new update, those SQL scripts will go into the Git repo, and we have a, just a separate SQL branch for all the uh, code that might be used when we're making updates. So those get deployed on stage, and they get pushed out to production. So the other thing that I didn't mention on the environments portion is have multiple environments. So have your development environment, which can be local or wherever, um, have a staging environment for, okay, this is real, this is what's going to be, that this can be live at any moment, and then the production environment, which is handling the pro production data. And for that, you, you know, we have three fully separate environments, so three separate MySQL databases, you know, three uh, web servers uh, to, to really make sure that that process is smooth and doesn't interact with uh, everything else. Uh, one of the big tricks with that is always making sure you have your config PHP file not in the, re uh, in the repo. <laughs> Because you don't want to be committing uh, to master all of a sudden for a production launch with uh, the configuration file that's for your local or staging environment. Any other questions? Keep going. <laughs> what about uh, the live sites that are really changing a lot? So maybe every five minutes a new article is posted, then people are posting a lot comments on those articles. Um, if you want to. Uh, um, 
put new stuff out on those. Uh, you have to keep track of all the changes that have to go for life science. Correct. So most of the time what we'll do uh, in that instance is we'll uh, sort of stop writes to the database for five minutes while we uh, pull down the latest DB, put it into staging, and redeploy it. So that's, that's usually a pretty quick, uh, we'll have scripts that'll handle the process of pulling down the latest DB from production and then pushing it into stage and then redeploying if we have to do a full redeployment. Normally we're just redeploying only pieces and parts of code, so we're not destroying the database in any way, shape, or form. Um, if we have to run scripts, well, we always pull from production to stage, run those scripts on stage to make sure that everything's, and then redeploy the whole package from stage to master, or to production. So it can be time consuming, at least to set up those scripts initially, uh, but after that's uh, going, uh, it really makes that continuous process very easy. So again, with a lot of these things, like Atlassian or with, uh, your deployment scripts and things, do the work up front, you know, set up that uh, workflow, and then the rest of the process becomes much, much easier. It's just the Peter show today. Uh, improve the marketing around that. So we have to talk about <clears throat> Evaluation of what's going on in that. So we we set out you know our content strategy, how we're going to talk about the content, how we're going to when we're going to uh, send content out. So we need to uh, continuously evaluate that to improve marketing. Don't be afraid to change things just because it's been sitting there and it's worked okay for long enough. Um, make sure you set up A/B testing. Have multiple uh, pages with different types of uh, views and content to test, you know, at least internally on stage. So what we like about having a staging environment is when we're you know, evaluating you know, where the best placement for content is or best marketing, uh, we can do that in a non-production way uh, with our clients. And re-engage, so, you know, follow through on the whole process. It's usually, a, you know, it's like sort of like continuous uh, integration. Uh, it's continuous marketing. You want to keep that uh, cycle of trust and communication going uh, in a circle, it's continuous. You want to get feedback from your clients. You want to respond to that feedback, react to that feedback, recommunicate, and listen again. Um, this is our crazy, crazy slide. It's from a couple uh, years ago, actually, from a, a email provider, email delivered. They kind of really hit on all these points in some you know steps. So you, you start out with your content, you, you segment, you look, you reevaluate. Um, and then you have to repeat over and over again. So it, it, it's time and work and effort, but it comes into play and helps you, again, build trust and communication with your uh, clients and viewers and uh, readers. Uh, this, you can, uh, I think if you just go to emaildeliver.com, they'll actually find the, a much better <laughs> than trying to take photographs of that. The whole goal of this is to start out with a plan, deploy, deliver on your plan, communicate, re-engage, listen, redevelop, hear what your clients are talking about. You don't have to necessarily react like this, but think and uh, uh, listen. And at the end of the day, this should all grow sales, or, or, or that's what we hope, because uh, without sales of, of any kind of uh, degree, no one's going to be in business. So the key to that then is, you know, responding to what the customer needs. Not necessarily wants, but what they actually need. Here what the customer uh, desires. And then adapt to those needs and wants. And that's the final questions. I know Jess was very eager to make sure she got her head in the picture. <laughs> So, so we really try to touch on a bunch of things, you know, in a generic sense. Yes, sir. Okay, so you talked about re-engagement, and you talked about the delivery uh, graph that you showed. Uh, what kind of tools do you use to collect the re-engagement? So that's a great question. So uh, specifically, uh, you know, on the email marketing side, we use Campaign Monitor, which helps us track, you know, all sorts of click-throughs uh, for email marketing. And there's also a million other email marketing tools. MailChimp is another popular one, especially with uh, Joomla, um, and there's other ones. So, you know, we, we can track across uh, the email, the actual website, 
um, even now with Twitter, uh, Google Analytics. So across all that. So Google Analytics is one of our key things. We also use um, a Go Squared, which uh, has a uh, GoSquared.com, which has great uh, more personal data. Uh, not it's, it's still anonymous, but you, you get a better data uh, we find for how long people have uh, been on the site, uh, where they come from, you know, more of that funnel. And it's, it's just sort of easier to use than the Google Analytics system of trying to create funnels and understand where people are uh, coming from and what they're doing with your uh, website. Those, uh, uh, Little cookie banner warnings. I don't use those because I'm still waiting for the first uh, company to be right. I just don't need them. Uh, if they start doing them, I'm quite as good as well. How's in the US? And um, if you use those campaigns, trackers, uh, <coughs> do I have to what? How do you have to cope with it? In the US, we don't have that issue yet. Um, Correct. So, and, and and you see that on all sites. It's that first time you hit the site, you know, do you agree to have the cookie? You know, get that done with right away, and then you never have to worry about it. I wouldn't hide it. I just the, the best ones I've seen are coming at right at the top. Um, kind of push the page down. Yes, no, and then that's saved. And there's not much you can do with that. Um, on the email side, those people have opted in, so we don't have we're, we're not scraping for email addresses or anything like that. So they've opted in. So they already understand the rights with regard to what's going to happen uh, in that kind of tracking. But the website issue is a little different because it's so anonymous and random that way. Does that answer the question? Yes. OK. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, what are your thoughts on the plugins that, for example, automatically screen content when you write something against having a human being actually doing the thing? We, back to the workflow of content, uh, we believe in managing it ourselves. Uh, it just it, it doesn't help us cultivate messages uh, throughout the process. If we know that there are certain times that things are going to happen, we want to be able to control that process and structure. Um, especially if you know, say, Jane Beyond is coming up, and we want to make sure that there's more tweets coming out. But we still want to. We know that in the mornings or in the evenings, that's you know the best time for that, or manage that process. Um, you know, if people want to retweet. That's much. You know, that's great. That's organic, and that's you know that can happen anytime. But uh, we haven't found any use for just automatically pushing content. And uh, that content may not just translate as well uh, if it's just automatical. You know, are you going to get the characters you want? Are you going to get the hashtags you want? Things like that. Or are you, are you talking about just specifically just dropping a tweet? But if they can't be bothered, why should the viewer be bothered to care? That, 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 that's, that's, that's really kind of the trick. You, you have to be honest with who you're you know, communicating with. You don't want to, you know, oh, if, if I don't care about what goes on the, uh, on my tweet, then, you know, why should anyone really pay attention to it in the first place? Correct. That's a very good point. Yeah, when that, someone, you know, DMs you back, you better, you know, respond. Unless it's Ruth. <laughs> Any other questions? Cloud, we love cloud. Uh, what uh, tools do you use to measure the results of a uh, marketing campaign? Uh, I don't know, something like New Relic or? Uh, so we are playing with New Relic right now. Um, uh, we, haven't, we haven't actually deployed anything off of New Relic yet. But uh, so I can't, we're, we're playing with it um, to see exactly how that works. Uh, it's definitely, uh, you know, New Relic is definitely worth evaluating. It's uh, expensive, uh, if I recall, um, but it's, I think it's worth uh, taking a look at. And a lot of the cloud service providers have one-click installs of New Relic uh, as well. So, about, uh, uh, Google? The Google Analytics. For example, to uh, measure the uh, site, for example, how many customers from uh, uh, which region uh, they use? Uh, what about Google Analytics? Use it or? Yeah, we always use it. That, that's that's the go-to. Uh, every client knows how to use it. They understand it. 
They've used it at least once. So for them, that may be the first thing that they look at is Google Analytics, and then uh, we try with other tools. So we use Go Squared right now for a number of things, and we're evaluating New Relic um, on top of that. There aren't, well. So, yeah, that, no, that's, it, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Well, they, yeah, they monitor everything on the, you know, that's happening in the back end, so you can actually see, you know, where, yeah. well, it's, it's, it's just that reporting, you, you can pull it out and extract, you know, where things are coming from. Yeah, it's 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 not like a Google Analytics front-facing fun uh, marketing interface, but it but it but since it scours everything that's happening on the server, you can actually do a lot more tracking as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's more on the developer end stack of things to see where you know where where things broke in the you know in the running. Correct. Exactly, exactly. But that we're still in the evaluation of how that's going to work on, you know, that kind of set of tools or set of uh, results. And if there aren't any more questions, call it a day.